So while she's getting my PowerPoint up, um, I want to, she spoke a lot about what I have in my PowerPoint um, uh, in the, the beginning of it. Um, so my PowerPoint is strategies for youth and adults with disabilities to successfully transition from high school to college and employment. You know, college, you go through college and then you hopefully get employed in what you want to do, but half the world does not do that. So, um, but three main points I want you to know from um, this session, um, go ahead, go ahead and skip. Um, is three key points is one is to know your legal rights two, obtain services from opportunities for Ohioans with disabilities and three use your resources as um, Ernestine pointed out um, that's okay just hold on a second um, so there's big, huge key um, differences between the IDEA and the ADA. One major thing is, as soon as he or she turns 18, unless you have guardianship and papers, they have to self-disclose their disability to their employer, to the educational institution that they may be going to, um, and if they don't disclose to the employer, um, and or the school, they're not going to get the accommodations that they should receive. Um, as um, she pointed out, there is difference in uh, the IDA and the disability, the definition of it. Um, go ahead and move forward. But that's in my slide. Uh, like she said, you have to have substantial limitations that's going to affect the essential functions of the job. So some common, um, go ahead, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, some accommodations um, that are common that the child may be already receiving in high school, if they're not, hopefully, is extended time on tests, um, note takers, uh, student or professional tutors, um, this might be in a college setting, uh, oral tests, large prints, adjustable furniture. Uh, some uncommon accommodations would be um, making a dorm room accessible or bathrooms um, and dietary needs in the dining hall. So, um, but go ahead. And like I pointed out, that after graduation, you cannot access your child's information from the college, the employer, at all, unless the, um, your child or young adult has given the employer consent to release information to you. Um, one thing that's different is there is no individualized education plan. But for adulthood, the best thing to do when you're transitioning um, in that time is to contact Opportunities for Highlands with Disabilities. A new law came out um, in 2016 called um, Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. And they this allows students to come to Opportunities for Highlands with Disabilities at the age of 14. And the federal law mandates that they must have to spend at least 15% uh, of their funds on transition services. Here is the eligibility criteria for um, accessing OOD. Go ahead. Now, there are five potential entry points uh, to get into OOD. Students, um, if there's students interested in a career tech or college training, getting a job after graduation, you know, some your child may not want to or, or need training. Um, maybe they're going to need customized employment, like a job carve out, like she, Ernestine pointed out. Um, is the per, is the child an at risk youth, um, or like does the student need extended education services? And um, 
the student receives online or homeschool. So the school can actually contact OOD on your behalf. Um, or you can call um, yourself. It's really easy to access OOD in your county. Go ahead. So for um, expedited eligibility, I would have all the paperwork that you need, um, such as the IEP, um, medical records, and things like that. Um, it makes the eligibility process go a lot faster. Go ahead. And then um, it takes 60 days uh, for eligibility. Um, and then the difference is, is um, the individual will have an individualized plan of employment that will list all the, will list the goal of the individual, the employment goal, and then based on what that employment goal is, they're going to look at the services needed to obtain that goal. So if the student, go ahead, um, um, needs um, post-secondary education training for that job, so I went and I wanted to become an attorney, so I, it was required that I have to go to law school. So they can justify the funding for college. So it's all surrounding the employment goal. Now when the uh, young adult is in high school, these are the services that they can receive. And I won't, for the sake of time, won't go into great detail, but it's in your slide and you can always contact us if, if you have any information or need any information. Go ahead. So the difference between um, post-secondary education refers to education training beyond high school under OOD. It is, uh, refers to the instruction and related expenses determined necessary for the individual to obtain that degree, like I said. Um, training can be college, colleges, universities, technical institutions, and things like that. Um, after, if not going into educational training, then you, the individual will be um, able to receive um, job development where they will get assistance with um, applying for jobs, job coaching, and things like that as well. Um, go ahead. For the most important thing you need to know about if the individual wants to go to college is you have to fill out the FOSFA. Um, and then based on what the student aid report says, um, if the individual is receiving Social Security benefits, then the expected family contribution on the SAR will not um, affect um, their, um, let's say, if you have benefits, then um, it's more likely that you may get um, assistance with tuition from OD. Um, they can accommodate uh, with books and supplies, uh, rehabilitation technology, um, in very, 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 very rare cases, room and board, but it's based on uh, the university, is it uh, required for disability-related needs, transportation, and things like that. Um, but this school, they only do the least cost school uh, in the state of Ohio, unless it's related to a disability-related need. Um, so, I know Opportunities for Highlands is going to speak um, coming up, but use your resources. I am the advocate for the Client Assistance Program. We have a GRO. 95% of what I do is I represent individuals who may be having a conflict with their counselor or, um, or need an appeal, and that's what I do and that's what I love. So, thank you.